Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is introduce you to something called possibility space diagrams. They're diagrams that can help us solve problems on probability providing we've got equally likely outcomes. Like this example here we've got two normal six-sided fair dice are thrown and the total score is recorded. Construct a possibility space diagram showing all the possible outcomes and find the probability of scoring a total of seven. So what we do is this. We have a column and a row for each of the dice. So we could say this is dice one and this is dice two. And what kind of scores could we get on dice one? Well, in this example, you could get a one, two, three, four, five or six, and they're all equally likely to occur. And the same applies on the other dice, dice two. You could get a one, two, three, four, five or six. And what we're going to do is total these scores. So we could fill these in, like this one would be throwing a one on dice one and a one on dice two, so you'd have a total score of two. And if you're looking at, say, this entry down here, it would be a total of 12 because you're throwing a 6 on dice 1 and a 6 on dice 2, totaling 12. So all we need to do is just fill in these other values. So if we do that, then we're going to get a table that's going to look like this. And obviously to save time, I've gone on and completed it. And so here it is. So you can see that we've got six by six, 36 different outcomes, all equally likely. So when it comes to working out the probability of scoring a total of seven, out of those 36, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six ways of getting the seven. So the probability of getting a total score of seven will be 6 out of 36 possible outcomes. And if you cancel that down, it's 1 sixth. Now I've got another example here. You might like to try this one. A normal six-sided fair dice is thrown and a coin is tossed. Draw a possibility space diagram showing all the outcomes and find the probability of getting a number less than 3 and a head. So just pause the video and see if you can do that one. I'll give you the work solution in a moment. OK, let's see how you got on. So what I'd want to do is record the score on the dice, first of all. Now you can either put it on a row or in a column. It's up to you. I'm going to put it on a row. So it would have the fact that we could get a 1, a 2, 3, four, five, or six. And then down here, I'll have the coin. And on the coin, you could either obviously get a head or a tail. So we need to fill this in. You could put crosses here if you wanted, or you could put in brackets like this one would be throwing a one and getting a head. This would be throwing a two and getting ahead. Either way, you need to fill the table in either with crosses or with some kind of labeling like this. Well, again, to save time, I've now filled this in and we get. So now you can see that if we're to get the probability of a number less than three and ahead, well, here's our row for heads and a number less than three is just going to be a one and a head or a two and a head. So the probability then of getting a number less than three and a head is going to be two out of all the outcomes. We have six here, six here, six by two, that's 12 outcomes. And again, this cancels to one sixth. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea, anyway, of how you can construct 
possibility space diagrams. But you can only do this if you've got equally likely outcomes. There are other ways of doing questions like this as you'll see later. One way is by probability tree diagrams. But for now that brings us to the end of this tutorial.